I'm really excited to show you how to get this put together. Okay, we're gonna build a Knight Rider animation with LEDs on this breadboard. Um, I have seven LEDs here, seven resistors, a microcontroller, uh, seven wires, actually eight wires, and a USB cable to connect the microcontroller to my computer. Oh, and I can't forget, I'm holding the breadboard. Oh, by the way, if you have watched my video on your digital electronic starter kit, you'll have all of these things already if you purchase um, everything in that list. The first thing we need to do is we need to connect our LEDs to the output of our microcontroller. The microcontroller we're using is the Adafruit RP2040 Feather. Feathers have standard data output GPIOs, general purpose input and output pins. Um, they are data pins 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Um, so we're going to need to connect those whoop, to our LED um, to light them up, turn them on and off to create our animation. The problem is you cannot hook directly from these 3.3 volt outputs to these LEDs. These LEDs are able to be driven by 2.0 to 2.4 volts. So what are we gonna do? Well, this is where Ohm's Law comes in. Ohm. Nah, just kidding, not that kind of Ohm. George Ohm was a physicist who lived in the early 1800s and he discovered Ohm's Law. It is the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. Voltage being uh, typically labeled with a V, current typically labeled with an I, and R is typically stands for resistance. So V equals I R is the Ohm's law equation. You will run into this equation over and over and over in your digital electronics hobby. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, look at our LED kit. I have mine here, you may have a different LED kit, but every light emitting diode, every LED that you have, should come with a specification for the voltage drop and the current. These are 2.0 to 2.4 volts um, at 20 milliamps. And that is the critical information that we're gonna need to figure out what size resistor we need to drop the voltage from 3.3 down to between 2.0 and 2.4. We are going to need to take a voltage drop of 0.9 to 1.3 volts. We can plug that into our Ohm's law equation. We can actually rearrange it and to get the resistor that we need that will create that voltage drop. R equals voltage divided by current. In our case, we have 0.9 divided by 20 milliamps to 1.3 divided by 20 milliamps, which is the voltage drop we need, divided by 20 milliamps gives us a value of between 45 and 65 ohms. These resistors that I have here are 47 ohm resistors, which are right in that range. I have this resistor kit here and you probably have a similar one. 47 ohms is a very typical resistance that's available in lots of resistor kits. It's fairly standard. We have our resistor here, which will drop 47 ohms times 20 milliamps, 0.94 volts. And the remaining 2.36 volts will drop across this LED. And the whole thing will have 20 milliamps run it through it. Okay, so let's get this on the breadboard. You will notice there are, on one side, there are two power strips. Um, these are red and black labeled, red and black, po positive and negative. You can plug your positive and negative voltages into one side of this, and they will be connected across the entire length of the breadboard, so you can access it wherever you need. The rows here, um, each horizontal row is connected together in groups of five pins. So these five are connected, and these five are connected but they do not bridge the gap here between them. What we're going to do is hook up all of our components on this breadboard to make everything connect the way we want it to. We're going to start with our LEDs and our LEDs have an anode and a cathode. The anode is the positive side and the cathode is the negative side. They're not labeled, or at least not typically. You can always tell them by the fact that the anode is the longer lead and the cathode is the shorter lead. What we're gonna do is take that and plug it into the black 
power strip and take the long positive lead and plug that into one of the groups of five. And then we're gonna do that for all of our LEDs. I'm skipping one row in between each of these connections just so that everything is spaced out nice and e evenly so that it's not all crammed in there. And what you should end up with at the end of this is a nice row of seven LEDs. Um, I would recommend using red LEDs if you really want that Knight Rider effect. There you go. Now we're going to connect our 47 ohm resistors. In my case, you'll need to make sure that you use ohms law to figure out your resistor sizes. And we're gonna connect it across this bridge um, in the middle of the breadboard so that one side is connected to the same row as the one end of the LED and the other is connected to its own group of uh, five pins. So this will connect one side of the resistor to the LED and the other side of the resistor to a new uh, row that we can connect a wire to. And then last one, slide that right on in there. Now I'm going to give this a good visual inspection and make sure I've connected the pins of the LEDs to the same as the pins, same row as the pins on the resistors and then I've properly spaced the other side just to keep everything clean and tidy and visually verify that I've done the right thing. Now I'm going to take my microcontroller and put it pretty close, but not too close um, to the LEDs. Take the USB side of this and stick it out this way so that um, I can plug in my USB cable right here and it won't interfere with uh, any of this. So then I'm just going to push firmly and snap that into my breadboard. And then I will take these wires and I will find pins 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, which are all next to each other on this feather. And then I will connect them one at a time um, in the same order that they are on the board to the other end of the resistor. Basically what we're doing here is connecting the 3.3 volt output of the microcontrollers to the resistors, which the current will flow through those resistors, drop the 0.94 volts that we calculated earlier, and the 2.36 volts that we calculated will show up on the, out, uh, the positive side of the LEDs. The current is gonna flow through here, across the resistor, and then across the LED. Currently, this is not a closed circuit. We we don't have anything where uh, the current can flow from the negative side of the LED back into the microcontroller. So that's the one last connection we need. So I'm going to plug in the, the wire into this black power strip and then into the ground pin of the microcontroller closing the circuit. I actually already have the Knight Rider animation on here. And if I've hooked everything up, when I plug this in, it should start working. And there we go. Uh, the last piece of this build is to actually write the programming to build the logic inside this microcontroller that does this. So I'm going to unplug this for now and then um, hop over to my computer and show you how to set that up and get that programming. I have reset my RP2040 back to its factory settings, if you will. So we're going to walk through step-by-step step how to get this completely 100% set up from the beginning. I'm going to use a Mac. Windows is going to be very similar, and if you have Linux, you can also do this, but the, the details will vary. The first thing is to plug your USB cable into your computer. This should eventually pop up a RPI-RP2 drive on your computer. This is the starting point for this RP2040 microcontroller. Then we're going to browse to adafruit.com, search for the RP2040, um, and scroll down a bit. As they say here, there's great C++, C++ C++ support. There's not really good Arduino support and stuff. So we're going to actually use CircuitPython. CircuitPython is built for uh, beginners and easy introduction to microcontrollers. So that's what we're going to use. Welcome to CircuitPython. From here, we're just going to start with 
the installing circuit python step and now we want to download the latest software from circuitpython.org so we're going to open this up and then we're going to search for rp2040 um, i'm going to spell it correctly though there's the feather rp2040 so we're going to click on that we're going to download the latest stable, which at the time of recording is 7.1.1, the latest stable UF2 file. Click download that now. I'm just going to save it to downloads. And now I have this UF2 file in downloads that I can then drag and drop over into the RPI-RP2 um, folder that looks like a, this looks like a USB drive uh, for my computer. There we go, and it works. And as soon as you copy it over, it will detect the change and then it will actually reboot itself. And you saw a little flash there, and I'm just gonna close this. And when it comes back, it will actually come back as this circuit Pi drive. You can see there's some libraries on here and um, a text file, but the, the code.py file is what you're actually looking for. We can open this up with any text editor, but we're actually going to install the mu editor, which is built for CircuitPython. And it's a great editor. If you don't, if you're not a developer and you're, you haven't like picked an editor as your favorite editor, this is a great way to get started. But then we're gonna come back over here to install the mu editor, which is actually just going to link us to codewith.mu. And voila, here it is. Now we're going to click download and then we will download, in my case, the Mac OS X installer. Um, and then that should download pretty quick. Uh, looks like it's 108 megabytes, so your speed may vary depending on your internet connection. And then once it's downloaded, I'm just gonna open it up. It is open source software, and you'll need to agree to the license. And then you just walk through the installation process. It's standard for your operating system. All right. And we've got it copied over. I will, you can look into applications and you should now have a Mew, where is it? Mew editor, there it is. And then the first time it starts up, it's gonna go through this whole process right here, which is installing a bunch of stuff, installing Python libraries and all that stuff, getting everything ready for you to use. This may take some time on the first run. Okay, after it does its initial installation, you can just come here and you'll want to select circuit python as the mode and then click ok uh, and now you're into the editor this looks like a usb drive um, called circuit pi to our computer and so we're going to actually want to load click load and then open make sure you're on circuit pi and then open code.py from that circuit pi drive and you click open and it has print hello world now we're actually going to want to get some leds blinking you're going to click on creating and editing code they have this test uh, function here which you can then you can copy this you can just actually click on this copy code and then switch back to your new editor and select everything and then paste in this copy code all you have to do is i'm going to hold this up and i'm going to hit save it will automatically read the file and then start blinking the LED. You can see the LED on the microcontroller itself is blinking as well as this first LED, which I've hooked up to pin 13. And that's because the onboard LED is also hooked up to pin 13. So that's, that's great progress. The next step is let's go ahead and test all of these LEDs. Well, first, before we do that, let's just mess here with our uh, blinking speed. You can see if you change the sleep time here and then resave, it will change how fast the LED blinks because it's setting the value, the output value here to true, waiting 0.2 seconds, turning it on, and then waiting 0.2 seconds and turning it off. And so it's setting this 3.3 volt value here on and off. That's what's causing the LED to blink. You can change this to, you know, whatever sleep time you want um, and then hit save and then you know have it go really fast or really slow there's one other thing you can do you can actually set these to different sleep times 
and create different effects like a, a momentary off or if you set this to like let's say set this to one second and 0.1 seconds for the on value um, and then save it you can have a momentary flash just like that so you can create different effects by changing the sleep values between these two things so i'm going to set these back to 0.5 um, and then save that back here and we go back to our standard single on off every half second instead of led here i'm going to rename led as um, what am i going to call this pin 13 and pin 13 dot direction is output and we're going to say board dot d13 so these uh 5 6 9 10 11 12 and 13 those pins on this board are d5 d6 and so on um, that's how they're labeled in the circuit pi library so then we're going to come back over here and we're going to change this to pin 13 as well whoops and pin 13. So now we're gonna be setting pin 13, which is this D13 on the board to true and false instead. So we hit save, and this should actually just, no different, do exactly the same thing. Now we're going to actually add one of these. I'm gonna paste this one, two, three, four, five, six times. So we have a total of seven. And then I'm just gonna add pin 12, and then I'm going to add pin 11, 10, 9, 6, 5. The same thing for here. We'll change all of these to match the pins. It's 9, 10, and then 11, 12, and 13. Okay, so we've done that. Now I have a variable with each of the pins here um, that should be able to, I can output values here, true or false here, which will set this to 3.3 volts or or zero volts if it's off and then i can control all seven of these leds i'm going to copy this a whole bunch of times so that's one two three four five six seven and then we're going to set all of these pins that i just created and then i'm going to set do all of the same things for false so i'll just set all of these to false as well so now, in theory, if I've done this correctly, I can save this and all seven of the LEDs will go on and off in this blinking pattern. Let's, let's see what happens when I save. And there we go. All right, so we're getting closer. So the next thing that I wanna be able to do is instead of controlling all of the pins on and off um, all at once through one value, I wanna actually control these independently. So what I'm going to do is create a variable here called, let's call this states um, equals, and we're gonna set true to one of them and then false to the rest. And we'll want seven values here and seven. Okay, so states, and then I wanna set, I'm gonna change this so that we only do this once. And I'm going to set this to states at index zero. This is a z lists in Python and in most programming languages are zero indexed. That is the first position is actually index zero. The second position is index one. So, and so on. So I have index zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, that's what I need. So this is actually not gonna animate, um, but in theory, if I save this, I should get the first one on and the rest of them should be off. And there we go. So you can, I would encourage you, by the way, through this entire thing to you know mess with the code and change it around and kind of make it your own and figure out how what really works. So I'm gonna actually, just as an example, change every one of these uh, every other one of these to true um, so that we'll have every other LED on and then save it. And you can see, oh, it's, woo. I don't know if you can, you can really see that very well, but it's every other one of these is on and the middle ones are off. Um, it's kind of ooh, super bright. All right. So I'm gonna set it back to false. Now, the main problem here is that we have one of these on. What we wanna have to do, this do is move across one at a time these the rest of these LEDs. 
So the reason I've set this up like this is I'm going to, on every loop, shift the values, the position of the values in this list. I'm going to create a temporary value and do states.pop. This will give me the value off of the end of this list, which in this case, as you know, as it's initialized to false, it is, it's going to set it to false. But then we're going to say states.push. We're going to give it an index of zero and the value of temp. So what this is going to do is every loop through here is going to take the end value off and put it at the beginning and then take the end value off and put it at the beginning and then take the end value off and put it at the beginning. And what that will do is move the true value slowly down to the end of the array. And then when it gets to the end of array, it will pull it off and put it back at the beginning. In theory, if I've done this correctly and I save this, it doesn't work. Okay, what did I do wrong? I don't know why I did that. It's not push. <laughs> this is insert, not push. Little brain moment there. <laughs> now, hopefully it works. There we go. And it's just going to move around and it's going to move in a circle because we're going to pop it off of here and insert it over here and then pop it off of here and insert it over here. And so what that does is slowly move the value down until it gets here and it comes back up. The only remaining thing that we need to do is have it stop here and go back the other way. So we are going to add a little if statement here. Uh, well, first of all, we're going to have a variable here that is direction equals one. We're just going to set it to one somewhat arbitrary. And then we're going to say if states zero, the value at the very, very beginning, which is where it's initialized is equal to one. I'm sorry, it's equal to true. Then we're going to set direction is equal to one else if states six, the value at the end is equal to true, then we're going to set direction is equal to any other value. So when it, the true value is at the beginning over here, then it will tell the direction to be one and it will go this way. And when it gets to here, it will tell the direction to be zero. And so it will start going back this way. So then we need to change our shift logic here and say, if direction is equal to one, then we want to do, oops, uh, then we want to do what we were doing before because, you know, direction, direction one, direction one is moving it in this direction. But what we want to do is change how we do this to put direction two in that direction or direction zero in that other direction. So we want to add else and we want to do temp is this time we're going to do a states remove. Then we're going to do states dot push um, and this will push it onto the end of the of, of the list and we're going to put temp. So the value we just removed from the beginning. So when direction of one, we're going to do what we were doing before, pull this value off and put it in here. When direction is zero, we're going to pull this value. Uh, we're going to pull this value off and put it in here so that it will start going back this way. So let's see if I, I did that correctly. There we go. And it gets to the end and dies. I figured out what I did wrong. Um, we're going to pop zero. Um, which is just going to pop it off at the beginning of the list. And then we're going to append to the end of the list, uh, which is what I was trying to do. And though, so if we save this, hopefully, yep, there's going to that direction and then it starts going back the other direction as soon as it hits. And there you have your Knight Rider in, uh, animation. The only thing left is make it go faster. And you can play with this speed. I'm gonna say, I don't know, I'm gonna try point two. Still not fast enough, better. What if we do 0.1? That's better. I'm gonna do 0.05. I feel like we need a good, a good clip here. There we go. There's a good Knight Rider am animation. What do you think? And there you have it. We have built our first circuit with a microcontroller. You've wired the outputs, the inputs and outputs, the GPIO of the microcontroller to through resistors to LEDs. 
you've programmed your microcontroller and now you can mess with this. You can search online and learn Python a little bit better and you can actually drive all sorts of logic from this microcontroller. The next thing that I'm gonna do is actually a little bit more complicated than this. I'm going to send I squared C signals um, and drive some of these LED displays. I've got the PCB uh, right here. I'm gonna put some, some mechanical keys and make a calculator. Um, and so I'm gonna do that with this microcontroller. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or you, if you liked it and um, I will see you next time.